I could not imagine when the Daily Mile started 10 years ago that there'd be children across the world running the Daily Mile. Actually, it's obviously mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling, I can't get my head around it, but it certainly gives me a warm glow when I think about it. In 2012, I was head teacher of St Ninian's Primary School in Stirling. And we had 420 children who came from a broad range of backgrounds. I thought as a head teacher that we were a really successful, sporty school. We were really successful at local athletics. Our success at sport locally masked the fact that many of our children were completely unfit. Ten years. Ten years of the Daily Mile. Amazing. I remember the very first day. I asked our PE teacher, Marion, Marion, are the children not fit? And she said, no, they're not fit. Most of them are exhausted by the warm-up in PE. So I said, what about the other schools you teach in? Because she taught in five schools. And she said, no, it's the same everywhere. Everyone knows the children are not fit. There's a lot of studies that show that children, say in the 1970s when I was growing up, roamed much more freely in their communities. And that has been shrinking decade on decade on decade ever since. Children participate in sport and things like that, but they don't do quite the same level of walking um, and there's not quite the same level of free play as there used to be. But the thing is, it's really important still to get that physical exercise. And there's huge amount of research evidence to show that physical activity can help reduce our chances of developing depression, can help support things like our self-esteem and our, our mental health, and can also be beneficial for our cognitive skills, again our, our memory and our attention, are also related to children's academic attainment. So it can really help with our learning and how well young people are able to learn effectively. But the most important thing, we know this about children taking part in activity, is that it's fun and it's social and, and the Daily Mile is that. I was covering a class of year five children for PE and I thought I'm going to see if they can do the warm-up by running around the field and see how they get on. A handful of children could run around the field, no bother. The ones that play football are in the running club. But about 25 of the 31 children struggled really badly, were out of breath, had a stitch and couldn't do it. And by halfway up the field, they had to stop. I had always considered children in the school were, were fit and quite surprised when, when some children couldn't manage. I thought, this is not right. This is absolutely shocking. We had a sit down with the children and I said to them, how do you think you did yesterday when you went for the run around the field? And they said, oh, it wasn't good. You know, they knew it wasn't good. And one boy said, we couldn't run the length of our cells. A positive difference was something that was, was quite quickly commented on by the teachers. They were more settled, they were more focused, they had a good energy. So I suppose this was after the first couple of days. The mental health benefits started really early on and the children were coming in glowing. The children were able to engage in a more meaningful way in their learning. I was definitely surprised by that quick impact that it seemed to be having. Physical activity can help a child's ability to focus. So it can help them stay on task in class. It can help them control their emotions so that they don't blurt out in class when they're not supposed to. It seems to do this by influencing something called executive function. Our executive functions are some of the first things that get impacted when we're stressed or when we're unhappy or when our physical health isn't 
functioning. And it includes a really wide range of cognitive processes, things like our attention, our memory, how well we can switch between doing different activities, how well we can ignore distracting information. And all of these processes come under this umbrella of our executive functions. Physical fitness was about two or three weeks later. And within two or three weeks, most of them could run around the field without stopping, which was an incredible difference from the previous state of affairs. And in that first month, all the core principles of the Daily Mile were created and they have never changed to this day. The Daily Mile hasn't changed one bit since the month it was started. Other teachers and parents started to kind of chat my door, as we say in Scotland, and say, can, can our children not do this? My older child's in that class doing this running every day. I want my other child to do it. And then by the summer holidays, the whole school. It was the daily 15 minutes, and that was apparently quite revolutionary to do exercise for a time, not a distance. Obviously the children wanted to know how far they were running in the 15 minutes, as did I. And somebody worked out that it was a mile. They did it every day. They averaged a mile. It was the Daily Mile. We were not going to be talking about the Daily Mile beyond the school. However, parents started knocking on the doors of other head teachers and asking if this could be introduced. The first piece of research into the Daily Mile was done by the Universities of Stirling and Edinburgh, and it was led by Dr Colin Moran. I first heard about the Daily Mile when I read about it in a newspaper article. We quickly approached St Ninian's Primary and asked if we could do some research on this really exciting physical activity scheme that they had introduced. And in fact, St Ninian's once upon a time had been my primary school. I didn't overlap with Elaine, it was much longer ago than that, uh, but it was really nice to be able to go back and complete the circle and work on something really good that the school had been doing. There were lots of anecdotal reports about how good it was for kids' physical health, how good it was for their learning, how good it was for their well-being and their behaviour, but actually nobody had done any well-controlled scientific research at that stage. <laughs> So we recruited two local schools, just under 400 kids, and we were able to measure things related to their health just before and after a period of several months where one of the schools introduced doing the Daily Mile and the other school felt that they couldn't do that. They felt like they didn't have the space. And that allowed us to compare changes in health between the schools and see if introducing the Daily Mile really made the kids fitter or not. What we found was that the kids who did the Daily Mile were a little bit fitter. They had lower skin folds, so they carried a little bit less body fat after doing the Daily Mile. And they definitely were more physically active and less sedentary. The critical piece of research was that they lost fat from their skin folds. So this would impact at scale on obesity levels in children. We first came across the Daily Mile when one of our commerce managers at the Ineos Grangemouth site saw a local news article about the Daily Mile in Stirling. So in 2016 we sent an email to Elaine Wiley. And it said she was from Ineos and invited me to speak at the Go Run for Fun event. And I said to John, have you heard of Ineos? No, nope, never had heard of them. No. We thought there was some kind of small charity that was just managing to get by, so we thought, we'll pay for our expenses, we'll go down to London, help them out. And that's, that's all we expected, but of course when we arrived there, it was quite different. They had hired the Olympic Park for this event, and uh, lo and behold, when we went in, there were thousands of children there. Who's ready to go run for fun? There were three people and myself who were going to give a five-minute presentation each about their area. And the doctor who specialises in obesity research couldn't see a way forward, nothing had worked. No public health initiative ever in the history of the world had made children less obese than they were the year before. I was kind of screaming inside because, you know, is it believable? But we had changed that. 
it was the first time I'd heard Elaine speak in public about the Daily Mile that way. I could put my hand in my heart and say all 420 children in the school are fit. And I was watching both her and the crowd of people and they were really interested in what you had to say. I mean, genuinely interested. So the next step, of course, was an invitation to go down to meet with Jim, you know, and, and sort of say a little bit about it. I imagined a boardroom and lots of suits, but they're just sitting around a wee coffee table. I remember the way he listened. He listened really carefully and he completely got it. I didn't need to go into a long explanation. He just got it and the Daily Mail Foundation was set up. You know, both Go Run For Fun and the Daily Mile are both sort of targeted at trying to improve children's health by introducing the sort of concept of regular exercise, which, of course, you know, in the modern world, they, they tend to lead a, a more sedentary life and the exercise bit's been forgotten. So both these foundations sort of, you know, trying to get to the heart of that, really. We have, since the beginning of, of INEOS, been very, very passionate about health and fitness and specifically about getting young people active, because when you start young, you build healthy habits for life. The Daily Mile, it's a very simple idea. Uh, the health benefits are fantastic. Partnerships have been super important for the development of the Daily Mile, and one in particular has been ITV. The Daily Mile, a new way to encourage your children to run, jog, or walk a mile for 15 minutes a day. The social purpose at ITV encompasses everything that ITV does on and off screen to shape culture for good. It's clear we need to do more to get our kids active. ITV came across the Daily Mile, thought what it was doing was great, and reached out to the Daily Mile to see if we could create a partnership which through ITV airtime and ITV editorial coverage could really turbocharge what the Daily Mile was setting out to do. The name's Top, Jungle Top, and I'm on a mission, a mission to recruit these innocent children into the Daily Mile Club. ITV have been fantastic partners from the very earliest days of the Daily Mile and they've given us exposure in local television and national TV that's really encouraged schools to sign up and given us lots of publicity with parents. 14 takes it. They call us Generation Unfit. That's not fair. Or even legit. Because some of us run the Daily Mile. ITV's got behind the Daily Mile in quite a major way. We've managed to secure quite a lot of donated airtime in order to get that Daily Mile message out to more people. As you can see, pupils are getting stuck into their Daily Mile. So I, I'm just so glad that ITV are going to keep backing us to get the children fit. It's been so important for us. I mean, the, you know that the Daily Mile was even written into Coronation Street which was just the best, and uh, that might have been the high point of the entire Daily Mile. Daily Mile, keep kids moving. 15 minutes a day, that's all. They're doing it at my school. No, I used to run two miles to school every day and two miles old. There's been an awful lot of research done in the Daily Mile. 16 universities have looked into various aspects of it. And basically the upshot is that the Daily Mile benefits the whole child. When we looked at the different types of activity, we found that there was an immediate impact on cognitive skills and well-being of going out and doing a daily mile-like activity. Those who'd been doing the daily mile for less than two months, we found that there was this good relationship between their fitness and their visual spatial working memory. So those who were fitter had better working memory than those who were less fit. The memory that you use if you've got to um, remember a phone number, for example, if you want to do some multiplication in your head rather than the calculator. So it's that sort of mental workspace, if you like. So it's sort of something that we know is really, really beneficial for children's learning. It helps us function in the classroom, but it's also beneficial throughout our lives. Physical activity just helps our brain be healthier. So it increases blood flow to the brain. It helps how quickly your brain works so it can be more effective, so neurotransmitters work more effectively. Schools don't like things being imposed on them and things being mandatory. I would like to see the Daily Mile as a recommendation for all schools. I have friends who are teachers who do feel overburdened with all that they have to do and all that we ask of them. It's a vitally important job, but, but, but once they do it, you know, kind of like me, once you do it, you realise the benefits of it. 
When the Daily Mile was brought to me, in my brain I'm thinking, okay, that's 15 minutes out of the classroom, that's 15 minutes away from curriculum. But I sort of regroup myself, and I thought to myself, these kids need this. It's unlike any other project or program we've ever tried to implement, I've never seen the kind of level of enthusiasm. Often we think that or we must finish a particular task or children must do their homework and actually sometimes going out and doing a walk or a run can really help and actually that's more beneficial than just carrying on working. Before we started it my students were really only able to write a couple sentences but once we started doing the daily mile they get exercise they're up and going we come back in the classroom and they're able to focus, they're able to write for about 30 minutes. After we come back from the mile, we feel better and we start doing our work faster. When we come in the morning, it's like we're, we're really tired. And then when we have our mile, we get like, um, our mind is fresh. I always feel positive energy after doing it. And I feel sort of like a warm feeling inside and I'm quite proud of myself. It actually gets me out as well and I think it's a part of my daily exercise. So I'm doing it with the children and it's become a part and parcel. If I don't do it, I feel a bit uneasy. Something has been missing today. In the future, I'm looking forward to the growth of the Daily Mile globally, which has so far been spectacular and I really hope that continues. And being part of sensational events like the World Athletics Championships and seeing the Daily Mile there, where I think it should be, right at the heart of a huge sporting event. It's an opportunity where we think that it'll really, really maximise the Daily Mile at grassroots level, but also really showcase the Daily Mile on the world stage with a global audience. And the one thing which, you know, myself and the team kind of I have is ambition and we love a challenge and we enjoy working on this project so much that we'll go the extra mile ourselves. Ineas have a global vision so they didn't stop at the UK, That they were really keen from the earliest of days to use their resources across the globe to make the Daily Mile global and it is global and in 83 countries. So I think the Daily Mile is one of the best Scottish exports ever. I can't believe that kids all around the world are doing the Daily Mile. My nephews in Ireland do the Daily Mile. I can't tell you how delighted I was when I heard that. The Daily Mile has had an impressive 10 years to date. It's gone from one small school in Scotland to over 14,000 schools in over 80 countries worldwide with over 3 million children running it. But we feel like that is just the beginning. 14,000 primary schools, 3 million children is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, we're on a daily mile! And did you love it? Yeah! How would you describe Elaine's personality? <laughs> <laughs> She's my friend at the moment, you know? <laughs> Elaine is absolutely a force of nature. What, what it is about Elaine is that she thinks differently. Elaine is absolutely inspirational. Elaine is brilliant. Elaine is fantastic. I really don't think it would have taken off the way it has if it didn't have Elaine championing it at every step of the way. She's not hidebound by what I would call the standard way to approach things. Everything was child-centred and child-focused and, and uh, that is very much a buzzword in education but she genuinely is. Schools listen to her, teachers listen to her and parents and pupils listen to her as well. And what it does is it opens up possibilities for you. You know, you don't see things and I can oh. <laughs> After doing the Daily Mart, I feel in a good mood, ready to learn. I feel quite refreshed because the wind blows against my face and it's just a really nice feeling. The Daily Mail keeps you really fit. I felt a little bit calmer. I feel better. I feel energized. It made me feel focused, like I didn't hear anything else. I just love it.